Live from Cape Canaveral, Florida, this is How to Become an Astronaut. This past weekend, I was in Florida, where I saw my dad's friend Scott get inducted to the Astronaut Hall of Fame. While I was there, I asked Scott and a few of his astronaut friends if I could interview them for this project. This is what they had to say. First, I talked to Dina Contella, who is the Mission Control Flight Director. She makes sure everything on the International Space Station runs according to plan and helps direct astronauts in the case of emergency. Here's what she said about how to become an astronaut. Well, so obviously you need to go get a college education, um, and you, ideally you would go on and get um, something beyond a bachelor's degree as well. And it's pretty rare to be selected that's simply a, ba a bachelor's degree. It takes a lot of different qualities, though, to be an astronaut. It's not just going and getting an education. It's uh, you sort of need to be a jack of all trades. Uh, so, for example, uh, this week on the space station, we're doing an experiment where we're um, going to dissect some mice. So, but not everybody on board the space station is a doctor right, or a biologist yeah. or somebody that would be uh, able to do that just, you know, on their own. So you have to learn skills that are appropriate for the, what you're trying to do. Imagine if you were to the moon, it'd be great if you were a geologist, but maybe that doesn't make you a great spacewalker. The next person I got to talk to was Scott Parazinski himself. Besides being an astronaut, he's also been the captain of the Olympic Luge team and is the only person to have both flown in space and summited Mount Everest. He's done five space shuttle flights and seven spacewalks, and his latest mission, STS-120 in 2007, was highlighted by a dramatic, unplanned spacewalk to prepare a live solar array, which he did successfully. He retired in 2009 and was just this weekend inducted to the Hall of Fame. Here's what he had to say about becoming an astronaut. The most important thing is to have a vision and to uh, uh, you know, develop the skills uh, sufficient to actually be able to apply. So in order to become an astronaut, you need to be a graduate of a college with a degree in engineering or math or science or, or, uh, or uh, medicine, and uh, then several years of experience in fields related to flying in space. And so in my case, I was a physician, and I uh, applied, um, uh, and not thinking that I would get in. And uh, basically, it, it took uh, um, 30 years of my life to build the skill set to, uh, to finally get accepted. Um, but there are so many different types of uh, uh, people that become astronauts. Uh, there are uh, fighter pilots, uh, test engineers, chemical engineers, uh, mathematicians, astrophysicists, physicians like myself. And uh, once you become an astronaut, then you have to learn about all these different fields that relate to the space program. So even though I'm not an oceanographer, I was, I was trained in many areas of oceanography and, and weather and geology and astrophysics because the things that we do up in space involve all sorts of different sciences. And so I just loved it. Every day was a different kind of learning experience. I learned something new every day of the job. The next person I talked to was Pamela Melroy, who is the pilot for Space Shuttle Missions 92 and 112, as well as the mission commander for STS-120. Here's what she had to say about becoming an astronaut. Well, uh, my best advice to you is to find something in a technical area that you like. And it doesn't have to be engineering. It can be any kind of science or mathematics or engineering. Uh, NASA astronauts are medical doctors and geologists and computer scientists and mathematicians. Uh, you can be, if you want to, you can go into the military and become a test pilot, which is how I became an astronaut, but you don't have to. Uh, most of the astronauts today are mission specialists who have PhDs, so pick something you really love, something that excites you, something about science or engineering that you think is super cool. The other thing I always tell people is think about how to be the kind of person somebody would want to spend two years on a trip to Mars with. <laughs> and you can actually practice at being that kind of person, right? You can practice working with people on a team, whether it's sports or music in a band or a club or other things. But practicing is really important for school, but it's also really important for being a good team player and a leader. And those are the kinds of people that we need because someone your age is going to be the first person to step foot on Mars, and maybe they'll be you. So get ready. Doug Wheelock is the only active astronaut I got to talk to. He was on the STS mission with both Scott and Pamela, and is currently training for his next mission. 
the most important thing is to find something you love to do. Hopefully it's in the STEM fields, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. If your interest is in that area, find something you love to do in that area. And so the steps, they're, they're pretty easy, really. I didn't really realize this until I got to the astronaut corps. But step one is to always be curious about what you're the world around you. Ask questions. So, and then once you get on that path and you find something you love doing, then just do it with so much passion. Just live your life with so much passion that people can't take their eyes off of you. Part of like venturing out to do great things in your life, whatever area of the STEM fields you're in, part of doing that and really living the life that you have imagined for yourself is to not be afraid to fail and understand that failure and, and Fears that we face are natural for everybody, and if you're trying, especially if you're trying to achieve something great in your life, you're, the failures are going to come often, and they're probably going to be sometimes devastating to your to your spirit. So just be willing to work through those fears. Get around somebody that that's maybe seen this type of problem or this uh, experienced this type of obstacle in their path, and figure out a way to work your way around it. You're going to develop a skill that prepares you for the extraordinary when it, when it comes. And so we're, the, the magical thing about uh, being an astronaut is like we're all just human and we're all part of the human experience. And so every, all of this walking on the moon, flying on a rocket, all of this is available to you as well. It's all part of the human experience. Really quick, what kind of training do you have to do? To so, so the training, uh, it, the training is very intensive uh, physically, but it's also a lot of preparation psychologically that you go through as well. And um, the biggest things that we do as astronauts getting ready to fly, there's two major things that we that we focus on in our training: is how to how to face and overcome fear, and how to stay in the present. For us, it's invaluable, and it, it really saves. It sa it'll save your life in space that there's nothing that happens in space so bad that you can't make it worse as a human you know getting involved <laughs> so we as astronauts we train uh, to be to stay in the present which is good actually a good skill to have in any walk of life definitely thank you so much Absolutely. Thank you. Great, great being with you Lauren and you. hello to all your classmates back in back in Dallas right yeah, that Dallas yeah, area Dallas. so great being with you today technical requirements must be between 62 and 75 inches tall, must have 2100 vision or better correctable to 2020, and must have blood pressure 140, 90 or lower in sitting position.